In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we enter more deeply into the Advent season, let us ask to know God's loving mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the coming one. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the present one. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the future one. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for your God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God, the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them to his bosom and leading the youth with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him. Glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out from the earth. And justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, 
that with one Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay. But he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and new earth in which brightness, righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to meet him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Advent began with a wake-up call that encourages us to be watchful and alert, we were called to attention. We will not perceive the presence of God without being on the lookout for it. Each one of today's readings continue that encouragement and tell us ba basically, clean up your act. Now, if we're not sensing the presence of God in our lives, it may not be only because we are half asleep but because our hearts are in need of some kind of extensive house cleaning. Isaiah thunders out eloquently that the coming of the Lord must be accompanied on our part by preparing the way. Make straight the crooked paths. Don't put zigzags in God's way. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains. Don't put obstacles in God's path. Smooth out the rough edges. 
and the glory of God will be revealed for all to see. The second letter of Peter continues this theme, urging that we be zealous and repentant as we await the coming of the day of the Lord. If we want a holy God to be close to our hearts, we must make of our hearts a fit dwelling place without spot or blemish. The gospel passage from Mark repeats this theme in John the Baptist's prophetic call for repentance. God is holy and requires a holy dwelling place. There is a good chance, however, that the call to repentance doesn't move us. We might argue that the strong appeal in today's readings really don't apply to us. We're not bad people. Would we even be listening to God's word if we were? We try to live a decent life. We do our jobs, we solve our problems, we make ends meet, and we attempt to deal with people fairly. Oh, we, we have our faults, and we're in no way perfect, no one of us, but our paths are pretty straight. But are they? Are they? Most of us usually consider ourselves decent because we basically have no major moral failings. But like a house that is neat but abandoned for a long time, we may not notice that a fine layer of dust has settled in every nook and cranny of our lives. The sins of good people are dusty kinds of sins, rarely noticed without a closer look. Complacency, smugness, procrastination, taking people for granted, self-preoccupation, chronic complaining, envy, pettiness, rudeness, ingratitude, laziness, never putting out a hand to help someone else. That's dust. Soft, fine dust, but it's on everything. This is a sinful condition that is in need of repentance. It may not be listed in the Ten Commandments, but it's real nevertheless and keeps the presence of God remote to our experience. May we profess our faith together by praying the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our needs before God, who is compassionate and patient from age to age. For the church, that like John the Baptist, we may witness in word and in action to the presence of Jesus in the world, let us 
pray to the Lord. For those who live in areas of extreme poverty and want in the world, in places deserted by the wealthy of the world, that a highway for God may be prepared in the wasteland, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are undergoing a rough period in their lives and fear that they cannot climb out of it, that in the glory of the Lord revealed they may find hope, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our young people, that they may find a joyful faith in their families and encouragement to respond to a life of ministry and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our community that are in need of prayer and those whose intentions are contained in this basket, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Hear our prayers that we make to you. As you once heard the prayers of the faithful people like Isaiah and John the Baptist, grant them according to your will. We ask this through the one whose coming we anticipate, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowly lists of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial, of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and God's people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. May we greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.